Should state governments limit the number of medical facilities and services that are available in hopes of controlling healthcare costs? Development costs for a new hospital could easily run tens or even hundreds of millions of dollars. Building and maintaining a medical facility requires complex supply chains and controlling costs is difficult. Certificate of need or con laws are an attempt to control medical costs by limiting the supply of services and facilities to only what is needed as determined by a state border agency. Underlying these laws is an assumption that competition in industries with high overhead or infrastructure development costs creates economic waste. A state agency is better suited to decide what is necessary to avoid unnecessary duplication, which yields higher healthcare costs for consumers. Over the past 50 years, most states, at the encouragement of the federal government, enacted some form of con laws. Since the 1980s, it has become clear that this cost control experiment was a failure. The U.S. Federal Trade Commission and the Department of Justice and several academic studies found that by eliminating competition, con laws actually drove up costs, lowered quality, and limited the availability of needed healthcare services. As the American Medical Association, originally a supporter of con laws, succinctly put it, con laws represent a failed public policy. As Americans struggle with rising healthcare costs, repealing con laws might be a possible solution. In 2020, 38 states still have con laws on their books. One reason may be that existing providers benefit from these laws. By empowering existing providers to bar others from serving patients, con laws are inherently monopolistic. In turn, these firms invest time and resources in preserving the anti-competitive power that these laws give them. As a result, most efforts to repeal con laws in state legislatures have been unsuccessful in recent years. Proponents of con laws argue that healthcare cannot be considered a typical economic product. Most healthcare services follow a physician's diagnosis or treatment plan, very often through an insurance network. Patients don't purchase services on an open market. A greater number of low volume facilities could lead to lower quality care for patients. Arguments both for and against con laws turn on how we understand things like cost, access, high quality treatment, and provider accountability and responsibility to patients. Several state constitutions contain provisions that prohibit the state from creating or maintaining monopolies or restricting economic competition. While few state courts have so far directly addressed whether con laws violate state anti-monopoly clauses, several have noted that they are inherently anti-competitive, leaving the door open to constitutional challenges to these laws in the future. The question turns on, what role should state governments play in regulating healthcare facilities? Are certificate of need laws necessary to help control healthcare costs because of the high fixed cost associated with setting up a new facility? Should we instead give doctors and healthcare providers the freedom to run their practices in ways that best serve their communities? Public health could hang in the balance. 